DBS name is steeped in history at Aston Martin. It's the brand's designation for a Grand Tourer, and it first appeared in 1967. It was even used by James Bond on Her Majesty's Secret Service in 1969. Fast forward to 2018 and Aston Martin has unleashed the DBS name again. This time though it's in Superleggera form, which is Italian for super light. Testing one of the most beautiful cars in the world demands one of the most beautiful locations in the world. That's New Zealand. This is where we'll figure out whether the British supercar lives up to its grand touring credentials. First up, let's have a look at the styling. This is genuinely a work of art. I mean, I feel bad even sitting in it and driving it. It is such a beautiful car. And it looks different enough from the DB11. So this now sits at the top of the Aston Martin tree. So they've differentiated that design enough to make this stand out on the road and let everyone know that you're spending big bucks on your supercar. But the styling isn't just skin deep. There is some active aero in action here. So first up at the front here, you've got that carbon fiber lip and then behind this mesh grate are radiators. So they're there to help cooling. Air then flows around those wheels and those beautiful 21 inch wheels, they look stunning. Out these strakes here and then down the side of the car. Now that all culminates to this point here where air is being force fed through this channel and into the boot to improve downforce. And it is a lot of extra downforce. So you've got a carbon fiber lip there. So that's just a traditional spoiler, but buried beneath here is the channel that that air comes through, through the car there and then spits out here. It generates 180 kilograms of downforce at top speed. That is incredible. That's in comparison to lift that the DB11 V12 generates. So this is functional stuff. Crack this open and you'll see the actual channels that it runs through here, all carbon fiber there too. As an engineer, this stuff kind of turns me on. This cargo space is usable too. Aston Martin says you can get golf clubs in there. We've fitted suitcases and all sorts of other paraphernalia in here before. So it is a fairly usable space, which is good. But the coolest part about this car is the bonnet. Come and check this out. Have a look at this. How stunning is that? So just like the design of the car, they've designed this engine bay to look incredible from any angle. You can see exposed suspension components there, that aero at work there, and just all of the intricate detail that has gone into making this car perform the way that it does. Now this is special, but the interior is pretty damn special as well. As the pilot of this jet, this is where you control everything and what a place to be. It looks absolutely stunning. Aston Martin lets you configure everything here and this spec in particular is beautiful. You can see these carbon fiber-esque inlays, leather as far as the eye can see and a beautiful leather stitching there on the roof as well. The steering wheel sits perfectly in the hand. It's not quite a perfect circle, but it's beautiful to drive with and then all of these surfaces that should be metal are metal. Love to have one of these on my desk. It's seriously cool. Now, Gone is Aston Martin's old infotainment system. Instead, the collaboration with Mercedes-Benz has brought this, the old command system. It's not fantastic as you get hovercraft as well, but it is an improvement and it's fairly easy to use with voice recognition as well. Head of the driver, LCD screens that show all your critical functions. So gone are analog gauges. And then there's creature comforts like this, a retractable electric armrest where you can put all your odds and ends. There's a couple of seats in the back as well, but I don't think you're gonna be fitting anyone in there anytime soon. So the engine, this is what absolutely makes this car. It uses a hearty V12. A V12 used to be a big old lazy engine that you'd stick in a Grand Tourer. It was never really a performance motor. Well, Aston Martin changed the game there by strapping two turbos to this V12. So it's a 5.2 litre. It makes a whopping 533 kilowatts of power and 900 newton metres of torque. And they've made it to what is possibly one of the best gearboxes on the market. It is a ZF Saxe unit, eight speed automatic. And because of the torque and those 305 wide tires at the rear, it's torque limited in first and second. Now to give you an idea of just how quick this is, I'm gonna drop it back to third, punch it. Oh man, the way it delivers torque is next level. I, my, my motto is you can never have too much power, but this, this is genuinely something else. I, lost for words. This is absolutely epic. 
the sound is really good. So this is 10 decibels higher than the DV11 V12, and you can hear it. When you get stuck into it, it's got a bark, and then Aston Martin has engineered a solution where they pump in a bit more fuel to give you crackles on the overrun. So as you're going there and pumping through these gears, you can hear the engine working, dialing back through the gears, it's popping, it's cracking. There's a whistle as well, like it, it is just stupid. Suspension is so important in a supercar and Aston Martin has nailed it. You've got three levels of adjustment for the ride and that's thanks to adaptive damping. You've got a forged double wishbone setup at the front and then a multi-link setup at the rear with adaptive damping on all four corners. It means that when you're in and around town, you can stick it in the GT mode, which is one of the three modes available. It soaks up bumps beautifully. You can hit potholes and you don't get jarred through the cabin. And this is something that supercars were never really good at. But then if you do want to hit the track or find some windy corners, you start dialing through the settings with this button on the steering wheel. It goes to Sport and Sport Plus. And it's there where the ride really firms up and delivers that zero body roll experience. In addition to customising suspension, you can independently customise drive mode. So if I want to tootle around, I hit the S button on the steering wheel here, pop it into GT mode, which is just a nice and quiet, serene environment. I see a couple of corners coming up, slap it into Sport, and if I want to go ballistic, we go all the way to Sport Plus, and that's where this thing really opens up and starts singing. Aston Martin calls this the super light. Well, a little bit of a furphy because while it is about 70 kilos lighter than the DB11 V12, still a pretty heavy car at around 1,600 kilos, but you'd never really pick it. It almost has a perfect weight distribution. The feel through the steering wheel, it's that noise again. The feel through the steering wheel is sensational. I can feel exactly what the car's doing all the time. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. It is right where it needs to be. And the handling, I mean, I just cannot understand how they've made a car with this much power handle as well as it does. It really is a next level driving experience. On all four corners, you're gonna find 21 inch wheels with Pirelli rubber. Yesterday when we were doing a recce on these roads, it was bucketing down. And despite that, I still had plenty of traction. When it dries up like this, the 305 mil wide Pirelli's at the rear, they really come into their own. And it's hard to believe that with 900 Newton meters of torque, when you get to those three plus gears where it's not torque limited in first and second, it holds on for dear life, and even when it does want to give you a little bit of freedom, it doesn't cut in and disable all of your torque, so you still have plenty of opportunity to give it a stab. Stopping power, let's have a chat about that. It is simply remarkable. You have a fairly firm pedal, but it's communicative, which is important. So when you do get on the anchors for a corner, it bites really hard and they're carbon ceramic brakes, which means you are never going to fade these things, I guarantee that much. 410 millimetres at the front of the size of the rotors, and then at the back we're talking 350 millimetres. They are absolutely sensational. However, can you hear that squealing sound? It's not the cameraman, that is the brakes. When you get a bit of heat into them, they just start making all sorts of noises. And I know Porsche once did an article why our brakes make noise. Well, yeah, I get it, but come on, it's a half a million dollar car. We could have at least tried to make it a little quieter under brakes. Okay, let's go into quiet mode and chat about the practicalities of the DBS Superleggera. Visibility, I can see perfectly out the front. It's a narrow window at the back, but yeah, it's fine. The wing mirrors are huge as well, which is important. I mean, stylish mirrors are great, but they have to be effective. And this is fantastic. I can literally see everything to my side. I've also got a mirror on that side that is perfectly open as well. Then on top of that, I have blind spot monitoring. So if I go to hit the indicator and there's a car there, I've got a message here and a beep that says, hey, there's somebody in your blind spot, don't merge into them. You've then got all the other creature comforts you would expect from a car like this. So you are getting a car that you could potentially drive as a daily driver. Let's have a quick chat about the negatives. This is gonna be nitpicky, but there are a couple of build issues here. There's like a rattle coming from that side of the car there somewhere. Just inside the door here, some of the carpet sort of isn't really finished well. The seat makes an incredible noise when you're 
pushing it forward to get someone in the back. Sounds like you're, you've got a V8 engine powering the seat on its own. While the car is quiet in GT mode, there's still a lot of noise that comes into the cabin and most of that's coming through the tyres. So aside from the squealing brakes, you do get a lot of tyre noise on coarse chip surfaces. Not a big deal because when you're on the highway, it's drowned out by this amazing Bang & Olufsen sound system. But it is worth keeping that in mind if you're buying this as a daily driver, it could be a little bit droning at times. There is absolutely no denying this is one of the best looking cars in the world. Is it as quick as an 812 super fast? Who cares? It is better looking than any Ferrari. Is that a bitchy thing to say? Doesn't really matter because the person that buys this car will revel in the fact that it is an incredible looking machine that turns heads and makes one of the best notes you've ever heard.